president uh, annoyed, frustrated uh, with Marion Williamson for jumping in the race ahead of him? Did he want a clear field to run uh, against the Republican nominee in 2024? Just not tracking that. I mean, if I had a, a uh, what is it called, a little a little globe here, crystal ball, crystal ball that I can tell you, but I, I <laughs> imagine eight ball, whatever. If I could feel her aura, I, I just I just don't have it. I just don't have anything to share on that. <laughs> like, listen, I get that the chances of Marianne Williamson beating Biden in the primary is gonna be difficult, very slim. But the smugness in that response, the arrogance in that response is unbearable, absolutely unbearable, a bridge too far to say the least. Okay, there's two different problems with that clip. Uh, number one is the press secretary's reaction, which is prototypical capital in the Hunger Games. Like, oh, is she? Oh, and her aura and her crystal ball. <laughs> Looking down on her nose at everybody. Marianne Williamson makes terrific points about corporate rule in America and how Democrats are not looking out for the agenda that he claimed to represent. Did she address any of that? Of course not. And she just, all she does is this dismissive elitist sneer that the American people can't stand. Mm -hmm. So it's also terrible politics, even if you all you wanted was your, uh, the, you know, the person that you're supporting to win, in this case, obviously Biden, the corporate Democrat. But the arguably the larger problem, Anna, is mm -hmm. the room. Because first of all, report, I'm glad he asked, but look at the context in which he asked it. Is the president annoyed? that she announced before he did. Well, she's running against them. Why would she care that he's annoyed? What a weird thing to say. She's trying to beat him to the nomination. And the assumption in the room is like, has she annoyed the people that are in power? Right. Like, shouldn't she have asked for permission first? Well, and how dare she go first? What do you, what, what kind of a bizarre assumption is that? Let alone that he followed up with, like, did he want to clear the field? Who gives a damn what he wanted to do? This isn't an anointment, this isn't a monarchy, mm -hmm. this is supposed to be a democracy. Agreed on all counts. One thing that I will say is the framing of the reporter's question was meant to stir up drama. Because that's what they do, they love to stir up drama. Politics has become one giant Bravo-like reality show. Okay, and yeah. it's annoying because it lacks substance. Substance would be the reporter asking Karine Jean Pierre about specific issues that Marianne Williamson has brought forth in announcing her run for the Democratic ticket, right? But he's not interested in that. No one in that room is interested in that because that would mean, you know, having this objective of informing your audience instead of engaging in this ridiculous reality show that they've turned the political arena into. And so to me, the reaction of the crowd to the aura joke made it even worse. Yes, agreed. So she does this silly like uh, snobby uh, joke about Marianne Williamson in an attempt to smear her. By the way, has Marianne's uh, record been lied about in re regards to crystal rocks and all this stuff? Of course. Of course, by the way, the job of the reporters is to say, hey, wait a minute, you guys are actually being totally unfair. Here's what Marianne Williamson is in favor of and what she's not in favor of. And by the way, I might not be in favor of some of her um, spiritual uh, you know, uh, advice, guidance, etc. Because I believe in something different spiritually. That is super normal. But by the way, if you mocked a Christian's, like a, a traditional Christian, let me put it that way, a traditional Christian's religious beliefs, they would be outraged. Imagine, that's a great right. point. Imagine if Karine Jean Pierre was like, oh, is she gonna eat the flesh of Christ and drink his blood? <laughs> oh, no, right? that would be outrageous. It would, right? exactly, yeah. So, okay, so they, the rumors already lied about Marianne Williamson to begin with, the, uh, the reporters that wrote about her in the context of the last election. But this time around, they, she mentions the aura and they're all like, oh, <laughs> let's make fun of the outsiders. <laughs> Corporate insiders are awesome. <laughs> I mean, it was like almost like some sort of bloodlust in the room mm -hmm. to make fun of someone who isn't part of the already powerful in Washington. You know, the 
establishment should be careful because they've certainly underestimated others in the past and had surprise outcomes in elections, like in 2016, right? Yeah. And I'm not saying that because I'm like, oh, Marianne Williamson definitely has a great shot. I don't look. I'm not gonna lie about what the reality is. I wish the reality was a little different because Biden should deal with a little bit of competition, right? And how and be fearful that there are other Democrats in the race who have better proposals than he has. But at the same time, this dismissive attitude toward the outsiders isn't always a good indicator of what the future holds. A hundred percent. Last thing on this, guys. Look, mainstream media was able to bottle up the left and say, no, the only people who can win are people that are in favor of corporate rule that want nothing to fundamentally change, etc. Don't you dare consider a progressive and they all laughed and sneered and did all those things, right? But they weren't able to bottle up the right wing because the right wing is not listening to them anymore. So then we got a populist, but we got a populist who was only in it for himself and was deeply corrupt and racist and all those terrible things, right? And went in the wrong direction. One of these days, the dam is gonna break and they're not gonna be able to bottle up Democratic voters anymore, especially young Democratic voters. And when those populists rise who are factually correct and actually stand up for the American citizens as opposed to corporations, that room is gonna get a very rude surprise. And I don't mean in the right wing way, physical, all that nonsense. No, they're gonna get a rude surprise that the country hates them and would love for a populist progressive to rise up. And how do I know that I'm, so I'm much more optimistic than Anna. Oh, 100%. So I don't know if it's Marianne and or someone else, but it could be Marianne. Some progressive is gonna, whether it's this primary or the next one, is gonna rise up and totally shell shock the mainstream media. Because they think, oh, progressives, nobody would be a progressive. I don't know anyone in DC who's a progressive. Well, that's true, okay? Even the ones that are progressive are not really that progressive, okay? So they don't know any real populist that would actually take them on aggressively. And so the minute one rises, they're gonna change the whole country. But their number one opponent is gonna be mainstream media. And, and that laughter in that room was the perfect audio representation of their dis, disdain for the voters and for all of us. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.